you know, in the first one or two minutes when you start your history, you know that the, if this is a cranial case or a spinal case, and in the next five minutes, you you do get an idea if this is infratentorial or supratentorial. So, you know, how, <clears throat> how do you how do you go about taking a history uh, which is uh, which is complete, but uh, yet focus on uh, the lesion where it is, and then uh, making a differential diagnosis, um, uh, and then you know doing an examination which is focused, which which you know it is is complete, but you know uh, uh, along with that you know focuses on what is important because for example, <clears throat> in in, a, in an examination. In a, uh, in a CP angle tumor, if you missed a cranial nerve, uh, you're dead. But if you miss an SLR, a straight leg raising sign, if you miss something which is not there, so you know you have to have a focus exam. You need to know what, where do you need. And that's the whole idea of uh, uh, starting this session. I mean, it's the first session of its uh, kind. Uh, this is the first session today. And obviously there are gonna be some hiccups uh, because we are learning as well. But I urge all residents especially those residents who are, uh, you know, are giving their exam to, you know, uh, join and uh, discuss. Don't, don't be afraid to answer questions because this is the time. Because if you're afraid right now, it's okay. But if you're afraid in the exam, then it's a problem. You know, it's an exam where you have to speak and you can only speak if you practice. So this is where we are uh, helping you guys to, you know, practice, uh, you know, practice, uh, the way uh, you know the way you read an MRI, uh, practice coming up with differential diagnosis, practicing navigating your way through uh, your history and examination. So uh, with that, we I would like um, 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 we have uh, Professor Salman here. Doctor Yusuf has joined. Um, so you know uh, the way forward is that you know uh, for today. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Yasser in the hot sheet. Uh, hot sheet. He will not be the only one answering, but you know, if nobody answers, then you know he'll be the one who will have to answer most of the questions. But we can. Uh, the reason I asked Yasser that you know, um, every uh, so we can ask, uh, we can take names and ask questions. So that's why I want everybody uh, uh, so that they can unmute themselves. Yasser, just make sure that everybody can unmute themselves. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Yusuf, are you with us? Dr. Rafi, are you with us? Dr. Yusuf, can you hear me? Yusuf is muted, uh, Saad. Sound of Salman. So, uh, um, Yasser? Dr. Yasser? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay, now, uh, so, uh, so since uh, uh, we will, so you're gonna, we're gonna draw first, first blood from you. So, you know, um, so let's say uh, we let's not let's not start with CPA and let's start with infratentorial tumors. So you know when you start taking a history, how do you think an infratentorial tumor will present in a long case? What what can be the series of symptoms that they can present with? So the patient can usually present with uh, certain symptom complexes, like he can, would be complaining of headache. With, with that headache, there will be certain associated symptoms like he can present with vertigo, uh, he mm -hmm. can present with the gait disturbance issues. Also, mm -hmm. he can have uh, various symptoms related to the cranial nerves if the lesion is within the CP mm -hmm. angle. He can have present with dysphagia, dysarthria, uh, facial, <coughs> numb, uh, facial numbness, complaint of hearing dif uh, difficulty, or patient can have facial nerve weakness as well. Uh, if the lesion is within the cerebellum, he can present with various cerebellar signs and symptoms. Like he can be presenting with a complaint of uh, visual issues, secondary to diplopia. The patient can be presenting with nystagmus. Patient will again have uh, uh, tremors within the hand or gait issues can be present within the patient. Also, if there is a lesion within infratentorial lesion, it is massive enough to cause any obstruction. The patient can have signs and symptoms associated with hydrocephalus. He can be presenting with signs of raised ICP like headache, nausea, vomiting, 
and uh, also vision issues uh, secondary to the papular edema. Uh, so these are the signs and symptoms, symptoms that usually <coughs> patients can with if it's an infertentorial lesion. So, so, so generally, so generally, there are two types of symptoms. The general symptoms like headache, vomiting, you know, which can be supratentorial, infratentorial. But then there are symptoms or the signs which are more specific to infratentorial. Like for example, you talk about canal nerve palsy. So, if it, for example, if a patient says that I have headache, I have vomiting, and then if he says I have difficulty hearing, then you do suspect that it's an infratentorial lesion. Or if he says that if he has a facial weakness, or he says that my voice has changed or have difficulty walking, you know, he has, he has issues with balance, you know. So when you take history, when you start with those presenting complaint, you look for, you look for signs and symptoms which direct you to, you know, whether it's, uh, if it's a canal case, whether it's supratentorial, infratentorial, and, you know, canal nerves are the most important thing. You know, if, if the, so, you know, uh, most of the patient with CP angles may, uh, uh, you know, may not, um, uh, you know, when, so the uh, uh, infratentorial case may just start with headache, vomiting, gait, gait disturbances, and you may have to dig the further history, you know, uh, uh, ahead and ask about canal nerve palsy. So uh, can you unmute Dr. Yusuf? I think he cannot uh, add because I want uh, Dr. Yusuf and Dr. Rafe to give their two pieces as well. Dr. Yusuf? Uh, Uh, Dr. Yasser, can you unmute Dr. Yusuf? Dr. Yusuf, you are a co-host. Can you please unmute yourself and... So tell Dr. Yusuf, uh, unmute. So, you know, uh, any, so uh, once, uh, for example, let's say I'm, I'm the patient and I say that I present with a headache, vomiting, and I have difficulty walking. So how would you further, uh, what further questions will you ask me? What, how will your history be? Yeah. Dr. So, uh, so, sir, uh, I just uh, got Dr. Yusuf online over here. Did you ask anything specifically? I just missed you, sorry. So uh, let's say I am the patient and I am this 40 uh, year old male. And I just tell you that Dr. Sub, I have headache, I have vomiting and I have difficulty speaking. Now, how do you, how will you proceed? Three symptoms that I've given you, I have headache, I have vomiting, and I have difficulty walking. Now, how would you, how would you, uh, so how would I'm, you go about, yeah. Uh, if the initial bio data is in, just like, if I have already asked about name, age of the patient, address, residence of the patient, and the handedness of the patient, which is very important for the ST taking, uh, especially in the long cases, it, what is the handedness of the patient? Then I will proceed towards the presenting complaint. Is my first presenting complaint is headache. I will ask about the duration of the headache, site of the headache, where it is localized. How was the onset of the headache? Was it gradual or was it a sudden onset headache? What kind of character does the headache have? Is it a throbbing type of pain? Is it a pricking type of pain? Is it a stabbing type of pain? Sharp, uh, sharp piercing type of pain? I will ask about any radiation associated with the headache as it is localized in the frontal region or if it's within the occipital region, is it going into the cervical region or uh, it is involving the entire head of the patient. I will ask about associated aggravating factors. That does the, what maneuvers lead to increase in the headache and what maneuvers lead to decrease in the headache? Is it associated with any decrease associated with any vomiting? Or vomiting leads to, uh, so I will ask about a special time of occurrence of headache. That is this headache severe in the morning or any specific time of occurrence when this headache is severe, which can be associated with tumors? Uh, I will ask about uh, any associated medical patients with the patient is uh, taking in addition to the headache and then I will also ask about associated symptoms like any visual issues associated with headache, any uh, other symptoms like tinnitus or patient having any loss of consciousness, any episode of fits associated with headache. Uh, uh, these questions will be asked regarding uh, headaches, so, uh, any so, photophobia, uh, phonophobia, any aura prior to headache, any previous history of se sudden severe headaches. Uh, so, um, is that all? Jisa, uh, uh, this was about headache. Uh, uh, then I can ask about vomiting. Uh, I will ask about since when the patient is having vomiting, 
and uh, what kind of formatting is it? Is it projectile? It is not projectile, or is close getting a strain or not? The association, the frequency of the vomiting, what kind of uh, particles are we getting within vomiting? Any associated history of hematemesis with vomiting? And after which I will evaluate for the third complaint of the balance issues. I will ask him that is it associated with any vertigo? If there is any vertigo, is it central or peripheral? If there is balance issue, what kind of balance issue the patient is having? Is it uh, is it the balance issues present on sitting only or in a standing position? How does it relate to position? Is it presence on present on walking or not? Does he need to get a support during walking? What kind of uh, gait is patient having? Is he having short steps? or uh, any uh, specific uh, issues related to the step age of the patient, sir. So that would be about the presenting complaint. And uh, also, sir, Dr. Yusuf is now free if you need his input. Not, so Dr. Have... Yusuf, would you, would you like to add uh, to anything that Dr. Yasser just said? So he's just right now navigating through the symptoms that I've given him, which is headache, vomiting, difficulty speaking. Do you think, do you think he has covered all bases here? Yeah. Yes, Yes, obviously, because, you know, uh, uh, because we are doing sort of an assessment for long case, you obviously have to ask all these questions in detail. And, uh, you know, and sometimes the patient may have spinal pathology, so you can just skim through it. But uh, in the current scenario, yes, he has asked all the questions. But, you know, my uh, uh, assessment is that whenever you see a patient, I mean, these, uh, like just like you said, Whenever you come across a patient, he usually have three to four complaints like speaking difficulty or walking difficulty, headache, vomiting. So you can assess that, yes, this patient has some sort of cranial pathology. The symptoms and signs are of raised ICP. So then you need to focus more on the uh, lobar examination, lobar survey, and all the factors uh, that contribute to raised ICP. So you need to check for peplodema. You need to check for... Uh, in detail, lobar signs, you need to check gait, you need to check his comprehension, parietal and frontal uh, temporal lobes should be assessed in detail, memory and all those things has to be examined in detail. So, you know, the, usually they don't bring complex cases in exam, but whenever there is a clue that this is, yes, this is speaking difficulty, walking difficulty, then you need to assess that lobe in detail and adjacent areas in detail. So, so Dr. Yusuf is talking about, you know, uh, screening different, uh, so no, so no, uh, when you take, when you talk about long cases, other than the general symptoms that you explore, there are some surveys that you need to do. So what are those surveys, Dr. Yasser, can you, for example, I'll tell you one, there's endocrinological survey. So there are certain surveys that you need to do. Lobar survey is one that Dr. Yusuf just spoke about. I'm talking about history right now, not examination. So these are just ways so that you can complete your uh, history. So can you talk about those surveys that we do other than the general history? So we need to do cranial nerve survey in which we will ask the patient regarding the history related questions regarding cranial nerves. We'll ask them any associated uh, dysfunction associated with the sense of smell, any visual issues that the patient is having, any dipropia dip when the patient- For example, uh, for example, I am the patient, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Yasser, just start start the survey with me. I'm the patient. Um, you started, you, you explored headache, vomiting, gait disturbances. And up till now, you don't know if it's a supratentral infratentral. Now you start the survey with me. You're taking the history. After past, you, you have done with five minutes and uh, you start asking me questions. Uh, so uh, uh, I think it's better, it's, it's better. It's better. It's better to keep it in uh, the medium in English. English. If, if they, okay. Yeah. So any so, any uh, any recent uh, any changes regarding uh, your sense of smell? Any changes within uh, vision? Uh, can you perceive normally, or any double vision uh, is present recently? Also, is there any change associated with your test recently? Is there any facial numbness that you are uh, suffering from within the face? Is it unilateral or is it bilateral? And also within which region of the face are the numbness are you suffering from? Also, is there any complaint of recent onset facial weakness? Is it unilateral, bilateral? Is it only within the upper part of face or within the lower part of face? Any difficulty associated with swallowing? Any uh, difficulty associated with the uh, oral phase of the swallowing, particularly uh, in any difficulty associated with chewing, 
uh, any uh, difficulty associated uh, in turning your head to side head from side to side any recent onset regurgitation any nasal regurgitation any change in voice any dysarthric uh, change in voice is present or not uh, are you able to shrug your shoulders i can ask in history so this would be about my uh, cranial nerve examination so so, so 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 just 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 a point also now, you change don't... in hearing and okay yes, now you know now, so just a point and doc, dr yusuf and maybe uh, doc salman can uh, edit it on uh, can talk about this as well you know you're doing cp angle tumor so you started with cranial nerve but you know in the exam setting when you just have three symptoms like headache vomiting and gait disturbances you don't know what it is right and uh, you know uh, so you so you know if it's a cranial case lobar survey cranial nerve surveys and maybe in endocrinological survey if you think this is a cellular tumor has to come first you cannot talk about anything else you cannot talk about his leg pain you cannot talk about so you know uh, if it if you think this is a cranial case uh, i think the uh, if you think this is a cranial case the cranial nerve survey the cranial nerve survey will differentiate if it's a supratentorial case or whether it's an infratentorial case for example if the patient talks about uh, you know uh, issues with uh, f- vision issues you know it can be both ways it could be because of hydrocephalus it could be because of cellular tumors but but if he's talking about decreased hearing you know changes in his voicing the uh, voice changes or a swallowing issues so you know you it is there you can differentiate a supratentorial case from an infratentorial case dr you so would you like to add on to this what do you think i mean yes i totally agree you need to <clears throat> because you know in history and examination you are basically given only a subset of symptoms and you really don't need to narrow down your diagnosis on the basis of history itself so just like you said a patient who has gait disturbance and headache vomiting so headache vomiting could be due to any intracranial pathology and gait disturbance could be due to sensory disturbance and gait disturbance could be due to motor weakness so you really don't need to uh, you know focus your brain on a single pathology from the history itself yes the hips history does provide you a significant clue but whenever you're doing a detailed history in lobar survey cranial nerve survey you will be able to pick which part of the system the sensory system motor system the cerebellar system which part of the system is being compromised and then in examination you can further uh, 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 validate your uh, positive findings in history so um uh, a good point dr yusuf uh, so you know uh, when, so it's like it's just like fishing when you're taking history you're actually looking for a clue or some uh, so generally the patients give you general symptoms uh, you'll be very lucky if it gives you a, a sign or symptom which is very specific to a disease so you know when you take that history after exploring the general symptoms you you do surveys if it's a cranial case you think it, it you do a lobar survey you do cranial nerve surveys and if you so so the important thing is that you guys are short on time you have to complete your history you cannot for for example if you think that this is an infratentorial case you just have to uh, you know you have to pay attention to the cranial nerve surveys but you cannot give 5 minutes to uh, assessing the endocrinological survey you know you cannot just go on and talk about weight loss weight gain hair distribution because you know that this is not a cellular tumor you know that this is not an abnormality so you just have to rush through it is this point uh, do you understand this point dr yasser uh, yes sir i can so if Hello? anybody has any uh, so if anybody has any question they can always type and <clears throat> i i'm hoping Uh, can they unmute themselves if they want to ask a question uh, yasser yes sir i think we have allowed the option of unmuting uh, so, so i would like to, i would i would like to change gear and dr maruf can you unmute yourself dr maruf maruf yes sir yes sir i am there so maruf uh, 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 you have uh, done with the presenting campaign you have done with surveys and uh, so what next what comes after that 
I uh, was examination. Uh, I will summarize my history and make some different diagnosis according, and then proceed for examination. So, 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 uh, so headache, vomiting, uh, get this one, this disturbances, and then uh, issue with uh, uh, swallowing, maybe, uh, uh, maybe you know, decrease hearing on the left side. So th this is basically the gist of your history. Yes. So how do you proceed then? How do you proceed? Do you start with examination? Yes, I will uh, start with my examination. Uh, I will first start with the general physical examination. So I uh, just uh, just cutting you in between. There's a systemic survey as well where you talk about weight loss. You know, where you talk about you know if you're looking for a metastatic disease as well. You know, okay. CP angle. A very small portion of CP angles can be met as well. Now, so you you have to complete. You have to complete your history. Um, okay. Is, is your history complete? Uh, Yasser, do, do you think the history is complete? Or is, is, this, is there more to it? Uh, uh, sir, the history is, is still uh, pending. So I will... Uh, can you hear me, sir? Gigi, bilkul, uh, go on. What, what is pending sir, in the sir? history? Yes, sir. Is, what, sir, I, uh, what is... Yusuf Bhai asked the question. Yes, sir. Yusuf Bhai asked the questions regarding the low bar survey. Within the, uh, also within the low bar survey, we will be asking about various functions of the associated lobes. For the frontal lobe, we will be asking about the abstract thought of the patient, any associated uh, aggressiveness recently, and uh, the empathy of the patient, the orientation of the patient would be asked. We'll be asking about any calculation issues, calculation difficulties, uh, numbness of uh, any uh, numbness of one, uh, numbness that is localizing to any specific one part of the body, unilateral kind of numbness in the upper limb or the lower limb. Also, we'll be asking about any associated weakness that the patient has recently experienced. Uh, we'll be asking about uh, any seizure seizures that the patient is experiencing or any kind of deja vu that patient is experiencing or any kind of aura prior to seizures that the patient is experiencing. Also, we already asked about the visual issues. We do not need to ask it again, but the visual issues can give us a hint about the occipital lobe. Also, we will be asking a patient about the specific lobar symptoms related to the occipital lobe, like uh, visual issues in which the patient cannot follow certain objects or patient cannot visualize the moving objects. So this can be asked. Uh, so then any, uh, we can move forward towards, yes, sir. Yes, you continue, continue. We can move towards the endocrinological survey in which we can ask about the patients about uh, various endocrine symptoms that he can be experiencing, like uh, any or uh, any uh, recent, uh, if the patient is a female, any change in her menstrual history. We can ask about any associated uh, sexual dysfunction that is present. Uh, increased growth of hair can be asked about. Increased pigmentation of the body. Any kind of uh, recent weight gain can be asked. So, so yes, sir, yes, sir, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Patients of obesity. Yes, sir. We're short on time. So you've done in yes, technological sir. history. Let's, let's move forward. Anything left in the history of presenting complaint? Anything left in... I think we are we are okay with the history of presenting complaint in the surveys. Uh, so what uh, next? So what comes next? A systematic review of the patient uh, in which oh, we will yeah. ask oh, yeah. about the others. Okay. Okay. Systematic then review is the, done. Then what next? Past medical and past surgical history of the patient. Why is that the important? Personal history why is of that? The patient why, why is that? Why is that? Why is past medical uh, surgery sometimes, important? Sometimes a patient, if there is a patient of a CP angle per se, if we are talking about, he can yes. present with a history of a shunt already in place. Shunt. He can tell us about that already here when we went to operation. Yes, sir. So it, and so it is very important. Is so, it is, is so it is very important to assess if there is a surgical history. You know, normally, you know, sometimes you may not be getting anywhere, and just with the surgical history, for example, if there is a shunt. You may know that, you know, uh, uh, you know that, that there's been hydrocephalus and, you know, uh, so uh, that tells you a lot of things. So what next? A past medical, past surgical? We will ask about the personal history, family history of the patient. The drug history would again be important if we are talking about a supracellular lesion. We can ask him, it, is he taking any medications already? And uh, if he is taking any medication for certain hormonal issues, is how is he taking it? What is the dosage of that drug? Is it weekly? Is it daily? We can ask him about family history. We can ask him about any associated transfusion history or socioeconomic history in a quick turn, and then we can be finished with our history. So, uh, how many, how many, how much time do you think one uh, one should give on history? Because you know, uh, as for I know that your, your 
yes sir sir 8 uh, minutes 8 max 8 minutes max eight for minutes, history uh, i think 8 minutes should be enough for a history uh, if we are practicing i think we should try to get it done within 7 to 6 minutes if possible but 8 minutes are enough for a history taking it means are enough for history taking so because you know you have to understand that you know i, I for what i see your exam will most probably be in islamabad and then there are patients who cannot speak uh, you know uh, urdu and you may have sometimes you may use a translator in between and that takes time so you guys have to practice that you for now when you practice you practice and try and finish your history in 7 minutes time yourself because timing is very important thing time management is one of the most important thing and it is where you screw up uh, when you don't have time when you don't we're not organized you screw up you miss things so when, when you guys are practicing time yourself for 7 minutes considering the fact that you know you may get a patient where you have to use a translator maybe and may not be able to speak or do uh, uh, front hand so uh, history we're done with history what next do we do we do come to examination yes sir we can So, Doctor Yusuf, now uh, I've been speaking a lot. I would like you to take over and uh, navigate the examination of uh, of of, a, of this patient with Doctor Yasser, and maybe you can ask Doctor Maruf and Ozel as well. Doctor Yusuf. Yes, uh, thank you. So, yes, obviously we'll be moving on to the examination. Although it is uh, quite difficult to assess examination in terms of uh, verbal verbal words rather than actual performing, but let's see. So I'll ask. Uh, I'll ask Maruf to tell me how would he begin with his examination. I will begin my. I will begin my examination. Uh, uh, with uh, GP. First, I will uh, take vital of the patient and check for any scar marks on the patient, any previous patient scar marks or on, on the abdomen, as well as. Uh, general survey of the patient like build and uh, weight of the patient as well and i will uh, ch- check uh, check for uh, any uh, anemia cyanosis clubbing or any other uh, associated skin features on the patient and then uh, i will uh, proceed uh, i will proceed for uh, the cranial nerve examination I start from the cranial nerve one look for any uh, uh, difficulty in anosmia or nasal obstruction then go for the optic nerve examination look for the uh, uh, light reflex consensual light reflex direct light reflex and then uh, 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 visual field testing o- ocular movement check for 3 4 and 6 nerves as well as check for accommodation reflex uh, convergence as well as any nystagmus present at the moment then i will uh, proceed for the trigeminal uh, fifth nerve examination check for any numbness on the face Uh, as well as uh, any asymmetry on the face check for uh, muscles of mastication and uh, facial uh, as well as start with the facial muscles and look uh, also taste uh, if possible check for the taste on the anterior two thirds of the tongue as well then i will go for the uh, eighth examination check for ha- uh, hearing first i will start with the uh, whispering then i will uh, ask him, uh, then i will propose if the whispering is okay then i will proceed for a rhinitis test and if possible then webber's test as well then i will uh, check for uh, glossopharyngeal vagus nerve combined uh, look for uh, gag reflex as well as uh, uh, tone of the patient if we can pronounce r tone and e tone and check for the uh, hypoglossal nerve check for the uh, protrusion of the tongue from the cheek as well sir aage proceed to see so uh, so i so you know i would like to now add, i i would like now like to take advantage and you know maybe use uh, uh, ask dr salman uh you know because uh, uh dr salman generally uh, uh you know there is no uh, the the candidates feel that there's no consensus when they do an exam there's some examiners who would say that you know you just stick to what your pathology is for example if it's a cp angle tumor so you don't need to do an slr just an example while there's some examiners the candidates feel there's some examples who want them to do the whole examination so uh, what do you think should be the way you know um, uh, is it you need to do everything uh, or you can skip two things and maybe tell at the end that i'm not doing it because I, this is not this is not uh, uh, related to my case dr salman um yes i think it's um, very important to understand that examiners are different than what they used to be 
um, before um, we start uh, a day before and in the morning, we have a meeting. In that meeting, we discuss how we're going to conduct the exam and we guide people who are new or people who we think um, we have had some uh, feedback that who have um, um, asked questions which may not be according to what guidelines we have. So basically, we try the exam that if you um, have examined uh, the patient relevant um, systems, then you really don't need to do stuff as we just said as an architecture. So, uh, so Dr. Man, so if, uh, for example, let's say if it's a CP angle tumor, and if you think some exam is irrelevant or it's not may not require, so can you tell the examiner that I'm not doing this because this is not pertaining to the case and can so, move forward? Yeah. So it's like, for example, you know, uh, uh, somebody's, um, um, you know, we generally examine, we do a PR and this, that, and the other in, in some relevant cases. But, you know, when you're in the exam, we ask the examiner, is it okay if I do it or is it okay, can I leave it? So you can ask and, you know, examiners are told that, you know, it's important to do relevant stuff than irrelevant stuff. They are told this. Also, now in routine kind of stuff in which we don't need to require to do. Uh, so I just tell the candidates who are with me that, you know, if you're taking blood pressure, no, don't take that. That's, you know, do we usually take it? No, nurses do that. But if there's a relevant uh, story that somebody is developing, uh, uh, maybe hypotension, et cetera, then you could. If there's a history of uh, vertigo and stuff like that, then you could. But generally speaking, if it's irrelevant stuff, it does not require to be done. So you tell the examiner that, is it okay if I don't do this? Say that, you know, uh, it, it will save time. Tell, tell the examiner, I, I want to do the relevant exam and that's much easier way of doing it. So what Dr. Salman is saying that the examiner isn't there to fail you. He's come there and he, it is his utmost uh, you know, he's trying, he, he's trying his best to pass you. So it's, it, it's basically in your hands because if you can give a logical reason for something that you're not doing or doing, then, you know, he wouldn't mind. And uh, as Dr. Salman said that, you know, uh, for example, uh, you start with general physical examination and if the examiner tells you, as well, for example, Dr. Salman just said that he tells his candidate, you don't need to do it. So you can understand that the kind of examiner that he is, he just wants you to do the relevant stuff and you just skip through the unrelevant stuff and just tell maybe on the way that I'm not doing this because I don't think it's relevant. But then you have to be very sure what you're doing and what you're not doing, you know? So because, and the reason to do that is so that you can, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you save time. So, you know, a very valid point. Uh, so, you know, you have to judge what sort of an examiner you have. As Dr. Salman said, you know, they do uh, orient examiners and they tell them to look at relevant stuff. So the first thing that you have to, you know, when we go in an exam, the first thing that comes to our uh, mind is that this examiner has come to fail us. And I don't think it is, uh, it is that way. What That's exactly what Dr. Salman said. So, uh, 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 Maruf, uh, 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 let's talk about specific, uh, in general physical examination, is there anything specific to a patient with CP angle tumor? Anything specific that you look at? I will look for any shunt, a scar mass in that patient. Uh, and what else? A, a scar mass or a, a wasting of a wasting of the body, the overall build of the body. Why do you think CP oh. angle cause wasting of bodies? Uh, if if it's a mass type, uh, then there would be a possibility. If it's a so, mass. So, uh, so how, how common are CP angle mets? Uh, uh, well, they are very rare. So you talk about common things. Huh? You don't talk about rare things. This is not an exam where they want to trick you with rare cases. You talk about common things. Don't, don't dig a hole for yourself. So, okay. you know, uh, general physical examination, I don't know. Maybe you look at, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, blood pressures. You can st start with blood pressures. Maybe scar mark is very important. I can't think of any other thing, uh, uh, important, uh, general physical. Yusuf, can you think of any other thing that, that is relevant to a CP angle tumor in a general physical examination? If there is a sign of raised ICP, then might be there be some bradycardia in that patient. Otherwise, I don't think there's something else you can uh, find in the GP. 
yeah because but they would not give you a patient with raised igp but that's a valid point uh so a, a general physical examination what next what examination do you do next uh, i will go uh, for the cranial examination why cranial uh, examination because uh, on the basis of history my uh, the lesion uh, is pointing toward the cp angle so i will like to do the cranial nerve examination first okay you do the cranial nerve exam sahi hai you know how to do it we are not going to go into detail of it but what yes. are the important uh, what are the relevant nerves that you will check uh, for an patentral tumor what are the nerves that you need to spend time on uh, i will spend more time on the 5 7 8 uh, more of them on that and then on the relevant i will go look for the extracular movement as well as well as the uh, so fifth nerve fifth nerve why fifth nerve because uh, if the tumor is uh, in uh, the tumor is uh, large then it can go and compress that trigeminal nerve as well if the cp angle tumor is going uh, uh, cranially just not that you can have a trigeminal uh, it can be a trigeminal schwannoma yes uh, it can be kind of, or can be a tentorial meningioma as well so so yeah so 5 7 so you look at the middle and the lower complexes mostly yes. and if if the patient has vision issues for example if the patient has visual issues you don't know that visual issues because of hydrocephalus or is because of cellular tumor so you know uh, if if the patient does talk about vision issues so you need to spend time and do so completing an exam is very important so you've done your cranial nerve exam what next uh, then i will uh, uh, after that i will go for the higher mental functions and check them uh, 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 just uh, going a quick uh, higher mental function examination then i will go for the uh, uh, peripheral examination upper limb uh, lower limb as well as cerebellar examination so i will uh, after cranial nerve i will put more emphasis on the cerebellar examination so so if you think that this is an uh, infratentorial so you will do a cerebellar exam then you can move forward do a motor exam of the upper limb and lower limb and uh, what else uh, i will also uh, check uh, uh, for sense examination as well as the gait of the patient gait and do the rombok test get do rombok test why specifically rombok test uh, to uh, differentiate it uh, from the uh, cerebellar region if it is a posterior track or uh, posterior column or cerebellar region and uh, 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 so, so dr salman do you think this is the right way forward you know uh, uh, if it's a, or or or, or, you, uh, or is there something more that you guys think of that is required in an examination i i think this uh, this might cover all of the cp angle uh, tumor so, examination so so uh, so uh, now we come to the radiology so uh, dr uh, dr yasir uh, can you uh, can you scroll down the scan once so that everybody can see and then you can you explain your uh, radio, uh, then you explain start start explaining radiology and dr yusuf i would like you to grill him on this uh, i would just add add if required uh, uh, yasir can you scroll down the scan and explain all the scans that you have uh, sure sir uh, this is an uh, angel uh, cp vertebrae image of a man at bay so in dilatation of the Lateral ventricle, the slight dilatation of the third ventricle as well. In the region of the posterior fossa, I can appreciate a hyper C2 hyper intense hyper intense lesion uh, within the region of the right CT angle, causing uh, which is extra axial, causing compression of the ischial vein stem and extending along the pitus space of the cerebellum can you adjust your mic or can you uh, yes can you adjust your mic your voice is uh, not as clear as it was is it clear now no it's just uh, uh, ch- Hello. Continue. Continue. Uh, it was clear before when you started. Okay, sir. So <clears throat> I can appreciate a hyperintense lesion within the right CT angle, which is causing compression over the axillary uh, vein stem and also causing compression over the axillary cerebellum. 
Mark appears to be hyper intense on the T2. Uh, few so, areas of point in respect can be identified within the net. Uh, yes, sir. So this is about this image. So, so what do you, what things? So this is just T2 now. So look at the T1 as well now. Look at the T1 post contrast. So try and look at all images before you come to a diagnosis or. This is an ideal T1 naked image of the MRI brain of the same patient, showing a hypo intense uh, hypo intense lesion causing compression mm -hmm. over the uh, exulateral brain stem uh, at the level of the bones and slightly at the level of the medulla oblongata. The lesion again appears to be exactly in nature. And uh, so this is the so yeah. naked image. This is the uh, MRI clear of the same patient. Within the clear, I can appreciate uh, heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, iso intense areas within the lesion, uh, being suggestive of a uh, solid appearance rather than a specific appearance of the lesion. Can you show the contrast scan, please? Yes, sir. So we don't have a contrast. Okay, okay. Let, let's say it's, let's say it's a non non contrast enhancing lesion, right? Okay. So my okay. question to you, to you is yes, sir. When you look at a patient with a uh, when you look at the scan with a uh, lesion in a CP angle, what are the areas that you need to focus on? You know, there's a lesion, hypo intense, hyper intense. Everybody can tell that. So what are the what are the things that you think the examiner wants to hear? Uh, I think the examiner wants to hear about any associated uh, sorry any associated hydrocephalus uh, present or not. So associated the... hydrocephalus. So associated hydrocephalus is one. What else? What other structures that he wants to mention? The important positive and the important negatives in a radiology while explaining a scan with CP angle. Hydrocephalus uh, is one. He would like to know about the uh, involvement of the internal auditory meatus or not. In the, 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 the involvement, can you show the internally auditory matrix here? On, yes, on, uh, put yes, a T2 on, yeah. So, this is a this is the internal auditory matrix. You can appreciate the cochlea over here as well. You can appreciate the semi-circular canal, and you can appreciate another the cell within it. Most likely, the X now seven X now complex is the cell within the internal auditory matrix. So, why, why is it important to talk about the internally auditory matrix? There is a dilatation of the internal auditory meatus uh, and the cone sign is present. It would be suggestive of a vestibular so, show also. And So uh, what is the normal size of internal auditory meatus? I don't know what the normal size. So you need to know that. So when you're talking about dilatation, so you know, even the examiner, if he doesn't know about it, he'll ask you. So if you talk, because if vestibular schwannomas, I mean, I knew it when I, my exam was near. I don't remember it now. So there's some examiners who are fond of asking diameters, you know. So, uh, uh, and it's important if you're talking about dilated inter, uh, the canal, uh, uh, auditory canal. So you need to know what the normal is and what's, what's a dilated is. So, so in, uh, extension into the uh, IAC is one. Hydrocephalus, what else? Also, I, would, uh, I need to comment about the enhancement uh, of the enhancement of uh, post contrast enhancement of the energy, but we don't have any uh, contrast over here. I would like to comment about it. Uh, any associated dural enhancement present or not? Uh, also, I need to comment about uh, the angle it is making with the petrous bone. Whether it's ten. Why? Why? Why is that important? Why is that important? Angle for, with the petrous bone. For vestibular schwannoma, we usually have an acute angle, and in case of meningioma, we have. So can you can, can you can you can you maybe tell us what an acute angle look like? It's difficult. You can't draw in this, but you know. Yes. Uh, but let's say um, this is the pitress, This is the pitress part of the temporal bone. So this say, is yeah. the age of bone. This is the age of the lesion where it's terminating. So we can draw an angle from over here to here. In this case, it looks like an obtuse angle. But if it's a rounded vestibular schwannoma present, it would like encroach like this. So this angle, this angle with the pitress bone would be acute. So. 
So, uh, can you go on to the whiteboard and maybe draw if it's possible? Whiteboard pe ja ke if you can draw. So, everybody understand this point? Uh, the angle thing that Dr. Yasser is talking about, why is it important? Because, you know, if he asks you whether if it's a meningioma or a CP angle tumor, so that's one of the points that you're going to raise. Is that correct, Dr. Yasser? Yes, sir. Uh, it, it can be asked whether it's an acute or optic angle. It's an important discussion point. It's in a many domains to our Noma. And uh, also, uh, we, need to, we need to see that whether the lesion is only within the posterior fossa or is there any extension of lesion into the mediterranean fossa as well. In this case, I can now at least take like extension uh, into the mediterranean fossa is also. So, so, uh, so, uh, so basically what Dr. Yasser said, if you see a lesion in a CP angle, it's very important to tell about, to talk about whether, uh, uh, so you talk about, generally you talk about the signals of the lesion, whether if it's hypo or hyper intense, is it contrast enhancing, not. You talk about if it's compressing the uh, brainstem, he did talk about it, but did not mention afterward, he did not mention what is the status of the fourth ventricle? For example, here the fourth ventricle looks a little compressed. You know, so when you're talking about hydrocephalus and you're not mentioning fourth ventricle, so you're missing a point, you know. So you talk about the general features of the lesion, you talk about the uh, brainstem compression, you talk about hydrocephalus, you talk about fourth ventricle, you talk about the internally automatous, you talk about dural meningeal enhancement, you know. Um, um, uh, Dr. Salman, uh, uh, do you think, is there anything else do you guys, you guys want to hear? Um, Dr. 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 Yusuf, uh, do you think anything else that I'm missing? Uh, sir, I think he has covered all aspects of it. So, so, so uh, this scan, ko deke, looking at this scan, what is your differential diagnosis, uh, Dr. Yasser? Uh, because this lesion is following the CSS signals on T2 and T1, which is hyper on T2, hypo on T1, and also because of this uh, appearance on the clear that is suggestive of a solid lesion. I would uh, ideally ask my examiner to show me a DWI because I would be thinking of an epidemic. So if he shows me the DWI, then I can confirm my diagnosis further. But even on the clear image, because there is uh, not, uh, there is not any split signal present. I can still say that it's most likely a epidermoid case. The main differential from an epidermoid with hyper intensity on T2 and hypo on T1 would be erythroid case, which I can either rule out on a clear image or a DWI. An axial DWI image would cause uh, enhanced uh, restriction restriction leading to the uh, hyper uh, leading to the White signal or a uh, hyper signal. So a basically, DWI. you want a DWI to differentiate. Uh, okay. It's so, uh, so okay. yeah. So, uh, a CP angle tumor can be a CP angle meningioma, could be a CP angle schwannoma, could be an epidermoid, could be a trigeminal schwannoma. So, today you're going to all go back, open Radiopedia, open up all those four scans of these pathology and then practice and differentiate how one's look, how one is different from the other. So, uh, Dr. Yusuf, can you start with the Viva? So we have, you have five, 10 minutes uh, to, uh, you know, now uh, uh, we know that this is a case of a CP angle. Uh, let's say, Sean, let's say this is a case of trigem, uh, vestibular schwannoma. Can you start his Viva? Okay, sir. So now that we have done with the examination investigation. So now we'll be, I'll be asking uh, Yasser and both of us will be communicating through the cell phone so that things are clear and easy to understand. So Dr. Yasser, what is your, now that you have made your diagnosis, how will you feel this patient? Uh, so because the patient is uh, having a symptom of headache, uh, and the lesion is very large in size, around 3 to 4 centimeters. Uh, I will optimize the, I will counsel the patient regarding the surgical management of this lesion. And I will optimize. So you will, okay, so, so, you know, so generally, uh, I'm sorry, I'm cutting in between. Generally, you know, you treat the patient like you treat 
so you know when a patient comes in in the er with this is that what you do you go ahead and just or you order some test i think i will consider the patient for surgical management but i will optimize the patient first and also i so what do you mean what do you mean by optimization what do you mean by optimization i, I will order his baseline a late backup also i will get an nsc so, review so i will so, check the so uh, so dr yasser dr yasser dr yasser by ordering test will you will, will you optimize patient or you will optimize patient by hydrating him you optimize patient by correcting his hypoxia or hypotension you know is that what optimize okay. so you know you need so you need, so, so you know you need to be clear what you're saying so Uh, i'm sorry i'm the one speaking the most but when you when he asks you how will you manage this patient so the first thing you will say is i will order blood work up and necessary investigation let's say he is a 40 year old maybe needs a chest x ray as well and i will admit this patient and you know counsel the family for uh, you know surgery so you do what you do in er or you do what you do in your ward when you see a patient that was the first thing you tell them to run certain tests you tell them to admit the patient you tell them where to admit the patient you tell them what medications to give to that patient and then you go and talk to the family dr yusuf do you think it's a valid point or you doing i'm just making it up so that i can tell him this is definitely a valid point but uh, generally speaking by the time viva comes at this point uh, things are usually so late that uh, the examiner that even if you try to say these things the examiner then tries to okay, tell me this thing but yes if you have time you need to tell these things because the examiner is looking for those words that uh, yes i will admit you know uh, things like i will admit i will hydrate i will start fluid i will start decodron or whatever manitol or whatever that is required so occasionally the examiner are looking for those specific words to be heard so uh, uh so the doctor should continue uh, with dr yasser so he uh, dr yasser is the management complete uh, no sir i will order some specific test to assess the current status of the patient as well i will get an assessment of the, uh, an audiometry assessment of the patient to assess for the hearing function of the patient and uh, also i will uh, so, so so what is a serviceable hearing dr yasser the sir the serviceable hearing is a pure tone audiometry uh, appreciable uh, on less than 50 decibel and then speech stimulation is for of more than 50% so yes so continue uh, then uh, after audiometry if the patient has got uh, serviceable uh, then on the basis of the audiometry i will further plan uh, my surgical approach for the patient also in this case i did not even contrast mri so i will get an contrast mri as well and after specific blood work up and radiological assessment and anesthesia fitness then i will counsel the patient regarding the need of the surgery so what what surgery will you do so uh, i will go for a recursive void and you ask me for this patient and uh, maximum test resection of the specific uh, angle and uh, so th- that's the procedure so th- thing is dekho abhi humne we are we are not drilling you we are not in the exam state situation but you forgot about the hydrocephalus thing uh, uh, uh on this side i will also uh, prepare the patient for an external ventricular drain uh, and uh, after the excision of the lesion i will follow the patient regarding the pressure uh, with an eg and i will give him an eg trial so 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 uh, can you explain the uh, procedure of intrasecmoid craniotomy how do you do it incision positioning yes sir the positioning that we utilize is the park bench position uh, we apply the three, uh, three pin between the two ap and the two lateral with one pin on the side of the surgery we mark the we mark the incision uh, behind the ear we need to mark the transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus as well after marking the transverse sinus and sigmoid sinus we need to do the incisions as it is almost 2 cm above the level of the transverse sinus and the stop to see the portion of the below the level of the transverse sinus 
uh, it should be at least two finger breadth away from the posterior surface of the airline and uh, medial to the sigmoid sinus. Uh, after giving the in, uh, incision, uh, uh, also just in case when I'm positioning the patient, I need to keep the thigh prepared for possibility of uh, neuroplasty later on and for harvesting the facial later graft. I also have the option of uh, putting in a number drain or any CSA uh, But I won't drain any CSA fluid prior to the... Dekho, ab, of... dekho, now, dekho, dekho, yeah, so now you're digging a hole for yourself. How often do you, have you seen patients taking facial later grafts for CP angle tumors? You have the pericanium there. Have you, uh, do you see this very... Do, is this a common practice, taking a facial later graft? I mean, it's not a bad practice. I'm just saying that you talk about things that are common. You don't, you don't screw yourself up, now And you, so and you keep things organized. You're talking about retrosigmoid. You're jumping one place to another. So the examiner, you know what he's doing? He doesn't know how good a surgeon is. He's assessing your flow of thoughts. So if that flow of thought is not organized, he'll be confused. I will, I so, will, I will, I will tell my examiner that because I am doing a CT angle approach. Uh, other than a posterior midline approach, I might not be uh, able to harvest an adequate graft. So just in case, if I need a graft, I will just keep it prepared. So, so you can say, okay, we usually take pericanium, but if required, we can take facial light as well. Talk about common things and then talk about uncommon things. So okay. incision, how would you do a craniotomy? Uh, I will, uh, I will uh, identify the region of the ST zone. And I will make a burr hole at the region of the uh, ST zone. And then I will do a craniotomy. The craniotomy should be at least 4 by 4 centimeter wide. The media, the lateral margin will be defined by the sigmoid sinus, the superior margin by the transfer sinus, and the inferior margin. Can so, can you help me? How would you, how would you open the dura? I will open the wide shaped manner. And y shaped manner? Yes, the wide shaped manner. For a CP angle tumors, is is Y shape for a suboccipital craniotomy? I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, what what does the book says, uh, Yusuf? Book has uh, book has document with the Y shape. It's y around shape. K shape or star plus shape, something like that. Because you need like this. So uh, just go back and check on this. I may be wrong. Uh, just confirm this because. You open yeah. suboccipital for suboccipital midline cannot be. You do go a Y shape for CP angles. You open along the sinus. You give a T. You can give a T shape. You can do a K. I'm not sure about the Y, but just look into it. I may be wrong. So I just look into yeah. this. I'm not as I'm not as uh, recent as you uh, when it comes to you know. So sir, what do you do? do you mean, uh, uh, I I open. I just do a C shape. I just open a C shape and open along the sinus. You know. I just uh, leave a uh, you know ledge of dura along the sinus open, and I know, and there's some who opens T shape because I uh, I know Yusuf uh, I've seen him doing words he he does it I think you Yusuf you open it you does it do a T so there's different ways but you talk about common things you know dura okay. cholia what next? Uh, so after opening the dura I will uh, if it's an ED place I can use an ED to drain the CSA. otherwise I will open up the cells to get the location. I can open up my cerebral medullary or cerebral time system to drain CSA. So how would you so open that? that? You I say, I take a microscope. The small things that that may bug you in the exam. You say, kya karte uske baad? you take a microscope, you put a retractor system on. You have, This is an exam where you speak. He doesn't know what's in your brain. He will only know if you speak. So you take, you say, uh, we're very short on time. It's last three minutes. We need to finish because need, people need to start their clinical activity. So you take a microscope, you put a retractor system on, you retract the brain, cerebellum, you retract according to the pathology. If it's a trigeminal schonoma, you retract differently. If it's a steep angle uh, vestibular schonoma, you retract differently. Mm -hmm. Once you retract, you open the systems. Then he may be interested. What systems would you open? So you need to the name, know, know the name of the systems. You know, like for example, would you open system a magna? Uh, Quantum medical system. So you know, need to know what cisterns you're open. Once you open the cistern, what next? You identify the tumor. You do an internal debulking. Um, uh, you know, you may go extra uh, capsular uh, if required. But you know, uh, now in the advent of, uh, you can say you know you do safe resection. One thing that you missed, 
and uh, you know you talk about facial nerve monitors some people use facial nerve monitoring for cp angle tumors when it is available he will ask you about a junk you talk about kuza you know then he will ask you about complications so what so what are the complications uh, that you might see in a patient with cp angle tumors uh, while performing a cp angle tumor surgery i can uh, while performing the surgery i can encounter bleeding where the uh, the frozen bone i can uh, यार देखो यू स्टार्ट यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द सेम स्किन ना फेटोजल वेन से पहले ट्रांसफर्स ऑफ सिग्मोइड साइनस भी आता है ना द सिग्मोइड साइनस एंड ट्रांसफर्स साइनस कम बिफोर द सो सी यू हैव टू बी ऑर्गेनाइज्ड व्हेन यू व्हेन दे टॉक अबाउट कॉम्प्लिकेशंस यू टॉक अबाउट इमीडिएट कॉम्प्लिकेशंस यू टॉक अबाउट डिलेड कॉम्प्लिकेशंस यू नो यू जस्ट ऑर्गेनाइज योरसेल्फ ना इमीडिएट कॉम्प्लिकेशंस आर ब्लीडिंग फ्रॉम द ट्रांसफर साइनस ब्लीडिंग फ्रॉम द सिग्मोइड साइनस फेटोजल वेन से ब्लीडिंग इज आई डोंट थिंक इट्स अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन इट्स जस्ट अ सीक्वल ऑफ सर्जरी यू कैन इजीली टेक केयर ऑफ दैट so you can injure the cerebellum you can injure the cranial nerves you can injure the brain stem csf leak delayed hydrocephalus so you you different you you divide your complications into immediate delayed you know whatever but you just do it so that you know you can impress the examiner that you know he has he has a mindset so yeah so immediate ex- uh, bleeding is one injury to cerebellum injury to brain stem injury to facial nerve injury to lower cranial nerves de- delayed my csf leak you know um, uh, meningitis Uh, hydrocephalus you know stuff like that uh dr salman uh, if you are with us uh, uh, do you think there's anything add, uh, that there's anything we need to add more or uh, you should do you think if there's anything we need to add more no uh, well i think um, but uh, as you said the small things the examiner has in mind that you know he will just interrupt that okay will you not say to so so i mean uh, although we think that it understood but the examiner wants to hear this thing although it is quite standard now you can't be doing these procedures with naked eye but yes they want to hear it and then they would like to know your steps in detail that yes i will detect the cerebellum i will identify the protrusions i will diathermize and cut it slowly and then i will remove the adhesions that will allow drainage of csf and sufficient relaxation so that i can visualize the ct angle you know the, based on our answer the examiner can easily assess that if he if the candidate is giving me a bookish answer or whether he has actually done a case or does he has an experience of getting scrubbed in and doing the case so i think we need to show that yes we have done the case we have been doing these cases and we are capable of it so uh um, so i think uh, i think we have covered cp angle tumors to miss uh, so what i want you guys to go do today is go back look at all possible differentials of cp angle tumors radiology start practicing in front of a computer you can open radiopedia app you can just scroll through scans you can have another uh, companion with you and just grill yourself okay, what is this how do you will differentiate that how will start speaking start speaking start you know uh, uh start uh, uh you know building your thoughts because in in an exam if you're thinking you need to think but if you're thinking for way too long if or, or if you're pra- if you're not practiced well then you know uh, it, it it will show so what i recommend is you go back look at all the scans for cp angle tumor, tumor today and then assess each other on it you know assess your radiology take your viva uh, of uh, of each other you know grill yourself right now and practice i think uh, uh we have uh, we have completed we have our time today uh, next week we will uh, uh, we will do cellular tumors and we will have uh, maybe dr maruf or dr uzair present the case and we will have dr salman definitely will have dr salman but we will invite some other examiner as well and hopefully we'll be more organized uh, next week and uh, because we know what to do now we have discussed this once and for we will do all uh, so what we do is what we are trying is so that we can make a scheme where you can know what to do so we'll do long cases we'll do short cases and possible we'll take you through talks as well online i thank you all uh, we'll see you next week i'm sorry this was a little boring but you know this is how exams are and uh, we'll see you all next week good work dr yasir uh, thank you dr yusuf uh, we'll need we'll need you next week as well and thank you dr salman for giving his uh, important time it was important i know his uh, his advices or his uh, you know whatever he tells you is very important because he's there thank you everyone for joining we'll see you all next week